with regard to the construction of the Keystone Pipeline, something that's been in dispute, and it's subject to a renegotiation of terms by us. We're going to renegotiate some of the terms, and if they'd like, we'll see if we can get that pipeline built. A lot of jobs, 28,000 jobs. It's been nearly four years to the day since President Trump greenlighted construction on the Keystone XL pipeline. You might remember at this time, his conversations with foreign leaders were being leaked on a regular basis. He was accused of ruining relationships with our closest allies. So will the same now be said potentially of President Biden? Later today, he's going to speak with the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. After bringing us back to the Obama days, blocking the XL project, which would have secured the transport of 830,000 barrels of oil each day, which firms up our energy independence, of course. Trudeau called this disappointment by the new President Biden, quote, disappointing. Other officials there are going further, talking about sanctions or retaliation against the United States. Joining me now exclusively, Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. Premier Kenney, thank you very much. Good to have you here today. Great to be here. So you have uh, had some pretty strong language on this. We understand that Prime Minister Trudeau will be speaking in the first phone call as president that uh, Joe Biden will have with a foreign leader this afternoon. Um, how do you, what's the impact on the relationship between our two countries over this? Well, first, we congratulate uh, President Biden on his inauguration and election and hope to have a really close and strong relationship. We have the biggest bilateral trade relationship in world history between Canada and the United States. But the biggest part of that trade is Canadian energy ex exports, largely from uh, our province here of Alberta. We have the third largest oil reserves in the world. Mm -hmm. We ship about uh, nearly $100 billion worth of energy to the U.S. every year. Keystone XL would have been a, a significant, uh, safe, modern uh, increase in that shipment um, and it is very uh, it, it's very frustrating that one of the first acts of the new president was I think to disrespect America's closest friend and ally Canada um, and uh, to kill uh, good paying union jobs on both sides of the border and ultimately to make the United States more dependent on foreign oil imports from OPEC dictatorships. We don't understand it and at the very least we believe that uh, those who have invested in this project trusting in the regulatory process in the U.S. should be compensated by the U.S. administration. Yeah, well, you make a lot of great points there. I want to unpack uh, some of those with you, if I may. Um, one of them is that one of the greatest achievements we've seen in the past several years for the United States and Canada, for all of North America, is energy independence. So if you're Saudi Arabia and you're looking at the cancellation of this deal today, what's going through your mind? Exactly. This is a, this is a good day, a good decision uh, for the OPEC producers uh, in reducing Canadian shipments of energy to the world's largest energy consumer. Uh, in particular, Keystone XL would, like the current Keystone pipeline, largely ship uh, Alberta heavy crude, and many of the U.S. refineries down along the Gulf Coast are uh, keyed up to uh, process heavy. If they don't get it from Canada, they've got to get it from places ultimately like Venezuela, uh, and I don't see how that. That's in the interests of the United States. So our plea to the Biden administration is, uh, please take a, a half step back here, get into a conversation with your closest friend and ally, Canada, about how we can ensure a future for safe uh, energy exports, continental energy independence and security between Canada and the U.S., while also taking very seriously uh, climate policy and environmental policy. You know, uh, President Obama's State Department concluded after rigorous study that Keystone XL would actually reduce carbon emissions because the alternative will be right. shipping it by rail, <laughs> which is higher emitting and less safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a great point. I don't, I don't know how they get around that in the Biden administration, because as you point out, five times the United States State Department evaluated the environmental aspects of the Keystone Pipeline deal. And all five times, the State Department said that they could not find any increase in environmental uh, issues that would ri arise from this. So, you know, one of my questions for you is when you look at what happens now, right? So your, your country has put a billion dollars in taxpayer money into building this pipeline. It's not finished yet. Uh, so what happens now and how does this oil get from Canada to the Gulf? How will it get there? 
Well, first, we hope that Prime Minister Trudeau will raise it with the president and ask him to sit down and discuss this in the broader context of energy and the environment. We are so closely integrated in our economies uh, that, that we need that kind of cooperation. Uh, secondly, uh, we are sending a message that there, there should be, uh, the Canadian national government should, should stand up for our interests just like we did against President Trump's unfair steel tariffs against our country, just like we stood up to his effort to rip up NAFTA. Um, and so we hope a similar position is taken here. Ultimately, we would at the very least uh, demand that the U.S. government provide a compensation to Canadian investors, including uh, Alberta's government, uh, for having t taken the U.S. regulatory process at face value. There was a, a permit. It was legally approved. Investments were made on that basis. Um, but ultimately, Canadian energy continues to flow to the United States. One thing we're concerned about are political forces trying to decommission a number of other safe pipelines that have been operating for decades. So I would call on uh, our friends in the United States uh, to realize Canada is your closest friend and ally. We're a much safer source of energy to fuel your economy than OPEC dictatorships. Yeah, before I let you go, you called for potential sanctions against the United States over this decision. Do you think that Prime Minister Trudeau will go that far when he speaks with President Biden on that phone call? I don't know, but um, I, all I can do is represent the interests uh, of Albertans. We have the third largest oil reserves on Earth. Uh, we we ship nearly 100 billion of that to the United States. Uh, we need that partnership, and we need to defend that as well as other efforts to decommission long-standing pipelines. Doing so would be devastating to the American economy. Uh, I, we need to find a way to work yeah. together on these issues. Yeah. I, I got to let you go. I know you're short on time, but just, you know, 30 more seconds here. When Were you shocked by this decision? Uh, do you, did you look at President Biden as somebody who might say, well, let's look at this deal, let's see how it's working, and maybe we want to pull out, and maybe we don't? Well, I wasn't shocked because his campaign did say that they uh, would uh, veto the presidential permit. H having said that, I was really uh, disappointed that the, the new president didn't mm -hmm. uh, give enough respect to America's closest friend and ally to at least sit down with us and hear our case about how we've reduced carbon emissions from Canada's oil sands, about how this pipeline would operate on a net zero carbon emitting basis, about First Nations, uh, American Native communities that are uh, taking an, an ownership stake in this, about the huge support of unions, the economic benefits. We have a strong case to make, and we just wish the U.S. administration would let us make that case. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. We're going to be following it closely. Uh, Premier Kenny of Alberta, thank you so much for being here today.